Good morning, this is Rick Kolk, and today I'm going to show you how to develop a VSIM embedded application to blink the LEDs on a Texas Instrument F28069M launchpad board. The F28069M launchpad board is a high performance, low cost board specifically designed for motion control applications. Shown to the right, the board has several features that must be configured for use with VSIM embedded. On the upper left corner of the board is the USB connection, which provides both JTAG communications between the target and the PC and power to the target board. Secondly, two jumpers, J1 and J2, must be jumpered in order for the board to receive its power from the USB. And finally, the three micro switches shown just above center on the board must all be facing in the upward direction. We begin the development of the VizSim model with a blank VizSim screen. Making sure that the supplied USB cable that comes with the 28069 board is connected between your board and free port on your computer. Next we'll launch VizSim Embedded, which you see in front of you. In the second step, from the Embedded Piccolo menu, we will select an F28X config block and configure it for the board we're using. The CPU is the F28069M, and as you can see, there's a long list of boards here that you can select from. Uh, we'll verify we're using the internal oscillator, which we are, and we'll also verify the JTAG connection is correct. In this case, it's the XDS100 V2 USB. Hit OK, and place the configuration block on the screen. Next. Your model will be saved. In this case, I've named it HelloWorld.VSM. And following that, from the embedded Piccolo menu, we will select a digital output for the F280X and place it on the screen. Digital outputs controlling LEDs occur through two channels. Channel 34 controls the red LED and channel 39 controls the blue LED. We will configure this diagram to light just the red LED. So I'll go into this digital output block, select channel 34 for the red LED, and select digital, and hit OK. Now we're going to drive the LED with a square wave. So under the blocks, signal producer menu, I will select a square wave, connect it to the digital output, and I will configure it to operate at a 0.5 hertz frequency by right-clicking on the block and specifying the frequency to be 0.5. Before continuing with this simulation, we need to make sure that the time step used in the target is set correctly. So under System, System Properties, the Range tab, Time Step is the time step used on the target. In this case, I've set it to 0.1 milliseconds, which is perfectly adequate for the blink. Also, the end time is ignored when code gem is being used. To execute the model on the launch pad, we must execute four steps. First, Tools, Code Gen, and I will take all the defaults in the Code Gen window and hit Compile. This will bring up a DOS window running the compiler and linker. Click any key to continue, and then download the code to the launch pad. And we see the red LED blinking at 0.5 Hz. Let's alter the application we just produced such that we are blinking both the red and blue LED and let's also increase the frequency from 0.5 to 5 Hz. To access the blue LED, I need another digital output, so I'll copy my digital output being used for the red LED and I will specify the channel number to be 39, which is the blue LED. To cause them to alternate, I will take the square wave signal that's being applied to the red LED and negate it using a block boolean not operator and connect that from the square wave to my blue LED. Last, I will go in and alter the frequency from 0.5 to 5 Hz. Now we'll repeat the last step. Tools, code gen, compile download. 
And at this point, we have both the red and blue LED alternately blinking at 500. 